exercise 3.5 brings us through learning objective 1 and 3. Learning objective 1, learning objective 3. What do we have? Parker Company manufactures and sells a single product. A partially completed schedule of the company's total and per unit costs over a relevant range of 60 to 100,000. Let's make a note of that right now. Again, I like to organize my thoughts. Relevant range, just so that I don't remember it. When I write it down, it reinforces it into my mind. Relevant range is 60,000 to 100,000. Get used to doing this, by the way, because if you're ever in a meeting somewhere and somebody's talking and, and putting out numbers, you're going to want to remember. You get into the habit of making little notes to yourself so that you have easy recall for this stuff. So there's my relevant range, 60,000 to 100,000. Okay, and required complete the schedule of the company's total and unit costs above. Well, let me replicate for you what we have here. We have our units sold across the top units sold and we're told 60,000, 80,000 and 100,000. So 60 to 100 that's in the relevant range so everything was in, is, in, is within the relevant range. And then we're given our costs uh, along the side. We're given total costs so we start with variable costs, fixed costs and we have a total for that. Then we have cost per unit a variable cost per unit, a fixed cost per unit, and a total cost per unit. And here is what we're given. Out of all of this, we're given our variable cost here of 150,000 and our fixed cost here of 360,000 for a total cost of 510,000. That's all we're given. And we're asked to fill in all the rest of this, the three numbers down here and all of these. So how do we begin? Well, the first thing we recognize is our relevant range is from 60,000 to 100,000. The units sold are within that relevant range. Our fixed costs are 360. We're in the relevant range, so we can extend $360,000 out to each of these right away because we're in the relevant range. The next thing we want to recognize is we sold 150,000, uh, uh, sorry, we sold 60,000 units. It cost us 150. If we do the math, we'll find that variable cost per unit is $2.50. 150 divided by 60 is 250. Which means if we sell 80, we're probably still going to sell them at 250 and here at 250. Remember, variable costs do this, but variable costs per unit look like that. So we can extend the 250 right across. <clears throat> now we just multiply. 250 times 80,000 is 200,000. And 250 times 100,000 is 250,000. <clears> and then we add. This gives us 560,000. This gives us 610,000. So isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Now we need our cost per unit. We have our variable cost. We need our fixed cost per unit. And you'll remember that fixed costs look like this. And then we did that 360 right across, but our fixed cost per unit drops because we keep dividing a constant number by a larger and larger number. So our 360,000 divided by 60,000 is $6. 360,000 divided by 80,000 is now 450, and 360 divided by 100,000 is only 360. So our total cost per unit. 850 here, seven dollars here, six dollars and ten cents. So there you go. There's number one done. So what looked like a, a challenging question really wasn't that challenging when we understood that fixed costs are the same right across, variable costs are the same right across, and the rest is just <clears throat> addition, division, multiplication. That's it. <clears throat> Number two, assume that the company produces and sells 90,000 units during the year at a selling price of 750. Prepare a contribution format income statement for the year. Well, <clears throat> all right. First question we have to ask ourselves now is, is 90,000 within the relevant range? So that can we use these numbers here? 
and 90,000 is within the relevant range. So our first entry is sales, and we're told that we sold 90,000 units at 750. That gives us $675,000. <clears> Less our variable costs, and we're told variable cost per unit is 250. So all we have to do is multiply the 90,000 by 250, we get 225,000. That gives us 450,000. This is our contribution margin. Take the time to write it out. Every time you write it out, you remember it over and over again. Less our fixed cost. Well, our fixed costs are 360. Don't go to the unit cost. You can do that uh, 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 if you want, but you'll be wrong. Think about it. This is $6 per unit if you sell 60,000. This is 450 per unit if you sell 80. But there's nothing in here for 90. This is a fixed cost. So you can just go right to the constant amount, right? So there we go, it's 360. And that leaves us with 90,000. And that is our operating profit. Remember, you want fixed costs, variable cost per unit. Notice that these are both straight lines. So we don't have to go to the fixed cost per unit because it's, it's not a straight line anymore. And that takes care of exercise 3.5. Exercise 3.6. And this will cover learning objective number two, which we've done, but nothing wrong with doing it again. Zerbel Company, a wholesaler of large, custom-built air conditioning units for commercial buildings, has noticed considerable fluctuation in its shipping expense from month to month, as shown below. Number one, required. Using the high-low method, estimate the cost formula for shipping expense. Okay, let's start there. So number one, what it's asking us to do is solve y equals a plus bx. And remember, x, y, high, low. If you can remember that, you can solve any high-low problem. So what's our highest um, units shipped? Eight. What cost is associated with eight? 3,600. What's our lowest cost, or lowest unit ship? Two. The cost associated with that is 1,500. The rest is 8 minus 2 is 6, and 2,100. And we divide, we just divide by 6 equals $3, or sorry, 350. That is our B. So now we've solved for B. So what we need now is to solve for A. Well, we can recognize that this 2, 1500 is an xy coordinate. So in other words, y, 1500, must equal a plus 350x times 2. So a equals 1500 minus 700, which equals 800. So what does our formula look like? Therefore, y equals a, this is our a over here, 800 plus 350 x. And remember, I like to draw boxes around them. There we go. So that's not so bad, right? The second part says, what factors other than the number of units shipped are likely to affect the company's shipping expense and explain? Well, we've already done this. We want to know what affects y. Well, y is, is, a, product, is, is a function of a plus b x. And it's telling us what other than this. Well, a, our fixed costs. Our fixed cost could change, or our variable cost per unit could change. So again, the insurance, our insurance expense could increase. Remember, this is our shipping costs. So the insurance uh, expense per vehicle could increase for our variable costs. Um, higher gas prices, right? That would cause Y to change, higher gas prices. Now, I want to give a warning before I leave this question. If you look at the units, X, the units that are shipped, they range anywhere from 8 to 2. Those are a small number of units. So we would expect wide fluctuations in Y. In fact, the high-low method may not even give us a realistic answer. It may not even give us anything realistic at all. What we're going to do in the appendix, uh, we've done it, if you recall the lecture videos, the appendix 
dealt with least, least squares regression. We're going to revisit this problem, exercise 3.6, even though we're not required to. We're going to. We're going to revisit it using the least squares regression method, and we're going to show how far off this is. So let's revisit exercise 3.6, and this time we're going to use regression. And in bold here, this is the formula y equals a plus bx that we arrived at using the high-low method. So let us now use regression. Remember, we start with our intercept, and we have our function here. All we have to do is highlight here, drag down, hit the comma. Highlight here, drag down, hit enter. There's our intercept. Notice that we got 800 using the high-low method, but by using all the data, we're now at 1,010. Let's see what happens to our 350. Remember, that's our slope. So we type in slope, and I can click on this one. Uh, my brackets automatically show up for me. I just move my mouse over to the first Y variable, drag down, hit comma. Go over to the first X variable, drag down, hit enter. It's 317 instead of 350. So this tells us that we have a lower variable cost than we originally thought and a higher fixed cost than we originally thought. But how good is this? How good is this fit? How well can we rely on this? To do that, let's figure out our RSQ, our R squared. And again, we do the same thing. Just highlight down here, hit the comma sign, highlight here, hit enter. 0.96, in other words, 96% fit. So we can feel fairly confident that this A and this B, we'll mark that down here, that's our A and that's our B is a much better fit than this original one that we got up here.